The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show, presented by Carnation Evaporated Milk. Hi, everybody. Our curtain's going up in a moment. Will we have time to drop down at the grocery store where George and Gracie do their shopping? Here we are. Oh, there's Mrs. Hanson from down the block picking up a few grocery items. Amazing woman, Mrs. Hanson. Always sets a marvelous table and yet always manages somehow to stay within her budget. Let's see what she's getting. Pound of coffee. Oh, and carnation evaporated milk. Well, now she'll save 10 cents right there every time she fills her cream pitcher with carnation. Carnation, you know, costs less than half as much as cream. Now, let's see. Tomato soup and carnation to go with it. Well, now, by fixing that soup with carnation, she'll save three cents over regular bottled milk. Carnation costs a lot less than bottled milk, you know. And now, let's see, chocolate pudding and more carnation. Well, now, Mrs. Hanson's smart to fix her chocolate pudding with carnation. That'll save her four cents over regular bottled milk. And boy, will it taste good. Well, all in all, I'd say that Mrs. Hanson's had a very thrifty day, so you won't blame her for smiling. In fact, you'll smile, too, at the money you save in little everyday items and the richer flavor you get when you use carnation evaporated milk. Uh-oh, curtain going up on George and Grace. trailer and the three reasons I shouldn't have come home for lunch. <laughs> well, look what she parked this trailer right on my new lawn. She'll ruin it. Oh, Harry, don't be childish. It'll ruin the lawn before it'll hurt the trailer. <laughs> Why do I live here? Why didn't I settle down in... Oh, my children later. I've got to write a very important speech that I'm making tonight. Oh, of course, George. And, Gracie, I'm going into the guest room to work. See that I'm not disturbed. Oh, sure, George. Mamie, how are you? Oh, how are the children? They're fine. Oh, oh wonderful. Blanche, what? I have some wonderful news for you. What? Mamie's going to move down here. <gasps> Isn't that exciting? Isn't that as soon as 
I find a house and a good school. Oh, Gracie, you know, Sherry's still having trouble with the spelling. Oh, really? Well, why doesn't she do what I do? If I misspell a word, I don't use it again, and that way I never make the same mistake twice. <laughs> Would you like me to help you find a place to live? I'd love it, Blanche. Could we start right now? I don't see why not. Well, well, now, do. now, wait a minute, Mamie. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a feeling that there's something we forgot to do. Have you got that feeling? No. Now, what could it be? Well, I, I do yeah. Where did the Earth Man go? The Earth Man? Uncle George. Oh. Oh, well, I can't tell you because if I do, you'll run right into the guest room and disturb him. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, we forgot to do. What? Well, you were so busy taking care of the trailer that we forgot to say hello. Oh. <laughs> welcome to Los Angeles, oh, maybe. <laughs> Jerry, welcome to Los Angeles. And don't forget to ask Blanche. Welcome to Los Angeles. <laughs> I've been a straight man all my life. I've just had my billing changed. I'm now the Earth Man. I love those little girls, but I'll never get that speech finished if they keep shooting me in the head with those guns. I'm used to ducking when I make a speech, but not while I'm writing one. <laughs> and, those, and those toys the kids play with today. Uh, Spacesuits, rocket ships, atomic ray guns. You know, they're so scientific, their own fathers can't play with them? <laughs> yes, uh, those, uh, those, uh, those, those, those little, ch the, the things the kids play with today, it's, it's, it's just simply fantastic. I'll never forget when, when, when I was a kid. I, um, I, well, oh, oh yeah, I must tell you this. Uh, before I tell you about myself, I was walking down the street and I saw these two little boys uh, arguing. And I said, what are you arguing about? And one kid said uh, to the other kid, he says, I, I'll bet my father can disintegrate your father. <laughs> so I said, what's this fight about? And the little one who was crying, he, he said, uh, we, we split an atom and uh, he got the biggest piece. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kids nowadays are geniuses. I couldn't split an atom until I was 12. <laughs> split an atom. I had to go to night school to learn how to tie my shoe. <laughs> But I did have a space suit when I was a kid. It was my father's old suit. <laughs> there was enough space in it for me and my two brothers. <laughs> the only game I remember playing when I was a kid was um, cops and robbers. Of course, in my neighborhood, we used real cops. <laughs> the games the kids play today, uh, uh, rocket patrol and space captain, I guess they get the idea from watching all these television shows. You know, to have a successful television show, you've got to have something fantastic, something out of this world. Now, children, it's cold day, so if you go in swimming, wear your sweaters. <laughs> you know, I think I've got it. <laughs> anyway, I must... I'll get it. Oh, I'd better take my typewriter and hide upstairs in the bedroom and finish the speech. Hello? Yeah. Oh, hello, Mamie. Ha have you and Blanche found a house? Oh, not yet, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, you're looking at one now? Well, make sure it's fireproof, and then if the children burn it down, it won't be your fault. <laughs> uh, what? No, I've got everything I need, Mamie. I even made a strawberry shortcake for dessert. Uh-huh. Oh, the children are fine. Yes, yes. They're looking for the Earth Man. <laughs> Me, will you call off the rocket patrol? They shot me out of every room in the house. Now, children, you come down here. Now, children, the idea that you behave yourself and let the Earth Man alone. Look, children, why don't you play in your trailer? But that's a rocket ship. Good. Why don't you fly to the moon? Yeah, let's go. Get number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get number two. That looks like fun. Get number four. Come back. <laughs> Gracie, 
I'm making a speech for Mayor Barron tonight, and I haven't even gotten started on it. I'm going out on the patio to work. And if those children shoot me once more, I'm going to take those guns away from them. Yeah, all right, dear. Uh, oh, oh, there's someone at the door. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, George. It must be Mr. Douglas, the principal of our neighborhood school. I phoned him to come over. Come in. The, the, the principal? Yes, I want to see if his school is good enough for many children. Oh, I see. Hey. Oh, hi, Burns. Oh, oh, hello, hi, Allie. Oh, I thought you were Mr. Douglas. Oh, no. <laughs> well, we do look a lot alike, Gracie, but I'm darker than Kirk Douglas. Kirk Douglas. George, did you hear that? I didn't know that he was the principal of a neighborhood school. <laughs> I went over and tell Blanche, maybe we can go to night school. <laughs> I just came in and already I'm lost. What are you I, doing with the typewriter? I've uh, got to write, I've got, I've got to finish a speech for Mayor Barron tonight. Oh, so I well, I won't bother it. you then. Okay. Oh, a speech? Yes. George, wait a minute. I've got a great opening joke for your speech. Wonderful. I can use it. Eddie Cantor told this at a dinner for Jimmy Walker when he was mayor of New York. Well, let, this. well let's hear it. You, and you never heard a laugh in your life like this when, when Eddie told this joke. And you'll do it even better because you're a better comedian than Cantor. I am? Yeah, I don't work for him anymore. <laughs> uh, let's have the joke. <laughs> Well, <laughs> every time I think of it, it kills me. Yeah, well, <laughs> this typewriter is killing me, too, the joke, Harry. Oh, yeah, I get this, George. Now, yeah. the mayor is sitting in his office, see, mm -hmm. and the chief of police walks in, and he says, Hello, Your Honor. He says, Could you lend me $50? My wife wants to go to Cuba. <laughs> so he says, Why, why does she want to go to Cuba? <laughs> 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 well, Harry, there's more, isn't there? Oh, sure. Well, what's the punchline? Well, I was laughing so hard I never heard it. <laughs> I didn't hear the finish. Why did you laugh? Oh, that was the week I had asked Eddie for the raise. Oh, oh that, that week. I see, yeah. that same week. I see. Well, I... Blanche wasn't home. See, George, shouldn't you be working on your speech instead of standing here visiting? You're right. Come on, Harry, let's go. Well, let's maybe go. I can help you. All right. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 that must be Mr. Douglas now, the principal. Uh, don't you want to meet him? No, I can't stand here any longer. This is getting heavy. Oh, well, here, George, I can give you a lift with that. <laughs> Isn't that better? <laughs> but it's a joke. Come in. Mrs. Burns? Yes, uh, Oh. <laughs> Kirk, what have they done to you? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Are you sure you're Kirk Douglas? Kirk Douglas? Goodness, no. I'm Mortimer Douglas. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Burns. Are you having fun with me? Well, not as much as I would have if you were Kirk. <laughs> well, sit down anyway, and I'll take your hat. Thank you. Now, Mr. Douglas, if you can convince me that you have a good school, I may have three customers for you. Customers? Well, yes, the three Kelly sisters, they are going to move down here from San Francisco. Oh, I see. Are they relatives? Well, they'd have to be if they're sisters. <laughs> Yes, well, I'm sure your three, as you say, customers will like my school. Mm -hmm. Are they of grade school age? Oh, yes, and very smart, especially the youngest one. You know, she was born in 1945, and already she's seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we have no problem, because uh, uh, our system here is the same as San Francisco. Oh? Uh, we may grade a little differently. Uh, you may what? Grade. Oh. Here... It's A, B, C, D, F. Oh, oh, it is different from San Francisco. Uh, there, it's G, R, A, D, E. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you have them uh, come over with their mother? Oh, that chair isn't comfortable. Huh? Well, sit this, okay. this one. This will be much better. Sit right down there. Now, well, now, continue. Well, where were we? Well, you were sitting here and I was sitting here. <laughs> No, I, I mean, what were we talking about? Oh, spelling. Oh, and by the way, uh, you have to help uh, the oldest Kelly girl, Shari, with her spelling. Oh, I'm sure we can help her. Oh, and can you help her with geography? Oh, yes. Oh, good. You know, she's never been able to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> here, sit 
down in this chair. <laughs> this is much better. There, now, <laughs> isn't that better? Well, really, Mrs. Burns, I must be going. Uh, may I have my hat? Oh, your hat? Oh, well, of course. Just a minute. Mrs. Burns, huh? are the Kelly children here now? Oh, that's sweet of you, but you didn't have to do it. They've got dozens of them. <laughs> <laughs> Get me that gun. Come on, I've got some work to do. In you go. Oh, you are. In you go. Oh, Kelly. There you go. That a girl. <laughs> Aren't you a little old for that sort of thing? Yeah, I guess I am. Well, Mrs. Burns, I must be running along. Oh, well, I'm so glad the Kelly children are going to your school because from what you said, it must be wonderful. It is, and I want you to know we've never had any juvenile delinquency. Oh? Well, maybe you can get some. I want the Kelly children to have everything. <laughs> <laughs> Come <on>. <laughs> Just got this out of the icebox. Doesn't that look nice? I must tell you what happened. I just said to Gracie that I'll never be able to get that Mayor Barron's speech finished. And she said, you made a speech three weeks ago for Jack Benny. Why don't you use that one? So I said it wouldn't make sense because he's a tightwad. She said so is Jack Benny, so it ought to fit perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good, huh? Would you like some? All right. I'll have Harry Von Zell tell you how to get it. <laughs> Well, actually, it's very simple. All anyone has to do is look at their issue of life with this picture on the cover, and then turn to page 150, and there you'll see car uh, strawberry shortcake as only carnation evaporated milk can make it. Now, this recipe is right here for you to cut out and use. But that's only half of it, because right here, it tells you how to make the most wonderful and economical whipped topping with carnation. Yes, you can actually whip carnation. Here, I'll show you how simple it is on your screen. You pour one cup of undiluted carnation into an ice tray, just as we're doing here. And after you've done that, you place the ice tray in the freezing compartment of your refrigerator for about 20 minutes. And as soon as ice crystals have formed, you take it out, pour it into a bowl, and whip for about one minute. Then you add two tablespoons of lemon juice, mix it in well, and then, of course, you add enough sugar to suit your own taste. Now, you whip this until it's stiff. That'll take about two minutes. Now, you put your fresh strawberries and your whipped carnation between split carnation-made shortcake. And there you are. Wonderful shortcake made with carnation and topped with whipped carnation. Not only that, but you have saved over two-thirds the cost of whipping cream. Now, you read about this in Life magazine. Try the recipe. You'll find that carnation performs miracles in shortcake just as it does in many other foods. Miracles just not possible with any other form of milk. And besides, it costs so little to enjoy carnation, the milk from contented cows. Harry's right, you ought to try this. Well, time is getting short, I better get on my speech. Oh, I see you've returned from your travels, Gulliver. Oh, Harry. You don't have time anymore to fix dinner for your husband, huh? Did you get the note I left you? Yeah, it was delicious. I washed it down with some leftover coffee from breakfast. <laughs> I went house hunting with Mamie Kelly. Well, instead of going house hunting, why don't you stay home and take care of me? Because Who I needs the Kellys around Mamie here after Kelly all? These kids are going to keep coming in here all the time. Bang, bang, bang. I hope you're satisfied. You've driven George off his own patio. I did not. You were the one that came out here and disturbed him. I did not. You did. You well, were the one who was giving all the trouble out here. You kept talking you and talking and talking. All I was trying to do was to spend more time. George! George, tell me something. Did now, Harry just a minute. Let George, George speak for himself. Don't you put words into I'm his mouth. He's <laughs> driven him away again. Oh, I, I was just going to ask you. You always tell. You talk, talk, talk. Just a minute, Lance. I'll answer. Oh, Harry Morton, you struck me. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you a little shove like that. 
You did not. You pushed me hard like that. I did. Not like that. Harry hard like that. Soft like that. Harry Martin like that. <laughs> I'm going in the f in, into the kitchen to finish this speech. And if anybody sticks their head in there, I'm going to wrap a skillet around it. <laughs> well, are you going to come fix my dinner now, or do you want to go over there and make enemies of the next door neighbors? Why, you overgrown it! Don't believe that was me who dived in the pool, huh? <laughs> Matter of fact, I dived in twice. Once to rescue jet number one, and once to rescue her equipment. <laughs> well, time is getting short. I gotta get on that speech again. taking the children out for a walk. Everything's got to be quiet. Blanche took Harry out shopping, and now you'll have time for your speech. Wonderful. What are you going to do? See, I'm going to answer my sister Hazel's letter. Okay, good, good. Would you like a chair to sit down? Yes, oh, thank you, please. All right, there you are. Oh, thank you. Right there. You. I'll put this here. Okay. Now, there you are. Why didn't you take the ink over with you? I didn't want to disturb you.
Gracie, I don't want to be disturbed. All right. out in the sun too long. Look at the size of that blister. <laughs> I want to apologize for Blanche's interrupting. Oh, I did not interrupt you. <laughs> now I've seen everything. A husband under glass. <laughs> Keep the sun out of his eyes. Oh. Uh. George and Grace, you'll be back in just a moment, but here, Sherry, here's a bouquet of carnations for you to remember us by. Oh, thank you. And posies for you. Oh, thank you. And carnations for you, Jerry. And carnations for you, Mr. Fonzell. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> well, folks, did you notice the wonderful, healthy smiles on those kids? Now, they were not only carnation babies, but those girls still get their regular supply of carnation every day, and that's something you can do for your family. Let them go on enjoying the healthful benefits of carnation by giving them carnation to drink, mixed with an equal amount of water. And use nourishing carnation in your cooking, too. There is no finer milk in the world to develop strong, sturdy bones and teeth. Abundantly supplied with milk minerals and vitamin D, Carnation is wonderful growing food for babies, so it's no wonder that eight out of ten mothers who use Carnation say their doctor recommended it. It's the milk every doctor knows. And now here's Carnation's own contented couple who incidentally this week were honored by receiving Sylvania's Pioneer Award for their work in radio and television. Our own George and Gracie, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Gracie and I will be back again two weeks from tonight. And next week, don't forget to watch those nice people, Mary Healy and Peter and Hayes. And Gracie, wasn't that a nice surprise, winning the Sylvania Award? Wasn't it, though? Mm -hmm. And, oh, I've got a surprise for you. Uh, Mamie's husband is coming down to visit her tonight, and you'll have to go to the train and meet him. What about my speech? Oh, you don't have to make a speech. Just shake hands with him. <laughs> Gracie, say good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Appearing on tonight's show were Sarah Selby as Mamie Kelly, Pierre Watkins as the principal, and Jerry James, Linda Plowman, and Jill Oppenheim as the Kelly children. Next week, be sure to see Star of the Family, the Peter Lind Hayes and Mary Healy show on most of these same stations. Now, this is Harry Bonzel saying good night for Carnation. <laughs> This is the CBS Television Network. <laughs>